All right, folks, it's the middle of January down here in South Texas and white cell season is all but come to a close. So it's giving me a chance to go through some of my gear. We've been knocking out a few reviews for a website a buddy of mine created, realhunters.com. So we're adding content to that pretty regularly. So if you haven't checked it out yet, go to realhunters.com. We do a little more in-depth product reviews on that site. But today, I'm gonna to talk about a product that I've been using for the last couple of years. It's really been a game changer for a lot of the public land, hunter, public land hunters around Texas and really across the country for that matter. And that's the e-bike or the electric bike or more specifically, the electric pedal assist bike. So I have the whole setup here. Um, instead of just doing the bike itself, I wanted to talk about some of the products that I take and that I've accessorized this, uh, this setup with that's really made it a game changer for a lot of public land hunting to be able to get in further, get in stealthier. And if you're hunting private land, some people have been using these as well too to, to approach uh, their hunting areas a lot more quietly. But I'm gonna start with a bike here. So what we have here, it is the Ecotrek. It's the sport cool version. Got this on Amazon. They're only about $899. Um, and everything that you'll see here in this setup, including the tow trailer, is right at under $1,300. And you can get these setups already made um, by companies like Quiet Cat or Rambo and some of the more popular um, models like that out there, but they're gonna run between four to $5,000. So once again, everything that I have on this complete setup that I've been using for almost three years now is right at around $1,300. So the bike itself, the Ecotrack, what it is, it's a 26 inch fat tire bike. So it's 26 inch by four inch tires on here. Um, they're made, they go over anything from snow to sand and mud really well. What we are powered with here, it's a 500 watt um, motor and a 36 volt battery on here also, which makes the bike a little bit heavy. We're not as worried about weight since we have the, the more powerful motor, but this whole setup comes in at about 60 pounds as well. So some of the things that I added on to here, this is a rear rack, which allowed me to add these saddlebags. I have the saddlebags emptied out, but actually everything you see on this table here fits into the saddlebags. Um, I made some modifications. This tow trailer is actually a handheld game cart. Um, it's the X-Stand game cart. Had this for about four years, and what's really neat about this, this is uh, servicing here as a tow trailer for the bike, but I can also use it as a hand cart. This uh, handlebar system comes off here. The tires, both of those come off and there's a sliding out hub here. So this actually turns into a hitch hauler that slides into your receiver hitch on your vehicle. So I can use it as a receiver hitch. I can use it as a handheld game cart. And what I've done here, just with this little modification here of adding a linkage chain uh, to the bike itself, created a tow trailer for this. And I was able to actually pack out an entire Neil guy a um, couple miles on this setup here as well, which would have taken me many more hours if I was doing it on foot. So that's the bike setup here. Um, what I'm gonna go through now, this is everything that fits into this saddlebag. So what I'll usually do is I'll have the saddlebags, I'll uh, add it on here. If I need to go over anything like going over a fence, some of the access points for public land are a little tougher to get these bikes through. You can actually remove the battery. Um, it just slides up here. That saves some weight. You can remove the saddlebags and everything in there and get this real lightweight uh, to move in and around some of the public hunting area there too. But what I'll focus on now, this is everything that goes into the saddlebags. So I'll just start out over here. Um, what I like to put in here is a lot of bungee cords, have some ratchet straps, have some zip ties. What that allows me to do is add stuff onto the bike, but especially I use these when I'm packing out game. Um, when you put a larger animal or even some of the smaller animals that may fall through some of the cracks in here, the last thing you want is any part of the animal dragging the ground or most importantly, hitting these tires uh, when you're dragging them out there too. So I carry a lot of straps, zip ties, bungee cords, ratchet straps in here. Um, I'll carry a headlamp and I also have a headlight that goes on the bike. A lot of times you're going out in the morning, coming back in the evening, you need that extra light on there for safety if you're having to go through any roadways to enter your, your hunting areas. I like to keep these on here. Uh, this headlight just attaches right there. Um, and that's gonna point any way that the bike is heading. I like to have the headlight if I need to look to the left or the right and not have to steer accordingly. That comes in really handily. Obviously I have some knives. Um, I put some bug spray since we hunt down in South Texas. It's really important. What you don't see that I do have on these tires, it's a Mr. Tuffy 
tire liner system. And what that is, it's a thicker piece of rubber that goes underneath these tires here that I have in place. When we're taking these off roads, especially down in South Texas, where everything can, can stick or poke these tires, it's a good idea to have a little extra tire protection. So having the Mr. Tuffy liners, I take, this is actually a 32 ounce bottle of slime, fits in the saddlebag fine. There's some smaller um, size uh, slime containers that you can put in there as well. But I keep slime in the tires, but if you have a, a large thorn and pull it out, what actually ends up happening is some of the slime ends up coming out before it seals up. I just shoot another bit of slime in there and I carry, this is more of a handheld pump. It fits in the bag. I have a full size bike pump with these four inch by 26 inch tires. You want something that can really move some air. So I'll just mount it on here with one of these, uh, one of these uh, bungee cords and I'll carry that around, especially if I'm in an area where I've been getting a lot of flex. That makes things a lot easier to, to uh, re-air this up. We've got the tuffy liners, we've got the slime, but every once in a while you just have that blowout in there. So I carry two extra sets of tubes. I carry two extra tube sets for the tow cart as well. The last thing you want to do is be three, four miles in and have a flat tire and have to roll this, this uh, 60 pound bike out of here. I also carry trash bags in here. The electrical components, as you see, the battery comes off really easily on this bike, um, but the controls themselves too, there's really just two Allen wrenches or Allen screws in here that you can take that off. If it starts raining, you want to get the electrical components off of here. And I just put them in a trash bag and keep them from, from getting wet. That can cause them to, to, to short circuit out. This is 12 foot bike cable and lock. I went with a 12 foot version because that gives you enough room to run the cable through each individual tire and the frame of the bike and wrap it around a tree or a pole or whatever you have um, out in the woods. A lot of these public land areas, uh, stuff will walk off and it's not chained down. So that actually fits in the saddle bag as well. I have a first aid and survival kit in here. This may be a little bit overkill, but it's got everything you need in there from band-aids to, to uh, tourniquets to fire starters um, and a lot of other materials in there as well. Since I have the room, I go ahead and put it in there. Um, Clear safety glasses. Going back to going in in the morning and coming out at night, um, you don't want sunglasses, but you can get up to 20 to 25 miles an hour on these bikes and the bugs will, will get in your eyes there too. So I carry some clear safety glasses. A variety of tools in here, pliers, crescent wrench or open face adjustable wrench, another set of pliers, various wrenches on here. What I did, I went through here and found every bolt um, and every screw on here to make sure that I had coverage. The most important thing is the Allen wrench set too. A lot of these bikes, uh, the screws on there and the bolts are, are Allen wrench sets. You'll have little things that break on these bikes from time to time and you want to be prepared. Um, I was hunting about a month ago and hit something in the front disc brake locked up to where the tire wouldn't turn at all. Luckily I had the Allen wrench set. I was able to take the two bolts out here and just take the complete front brake uh, unit off and uh, zip tie it up to the frame and that allowed me to get out of there. Still have the rear brake, um, but it allowed the front tire to turn there as well. Have a multi-tool, uh, never know when you may not or may need that. Um, Bell makes a really simple bike uh, toolkit. It has anything from Phillips heads, flat heads, star bit, and then a lot of the uh, Allen sets as well as a tire changing um, tool in here. This allows you to get the tire off the, uh, off the wheel frame. It has an Allen wrench key to it as well also. So that just about does it for everything I have in here. Oh, there's a, um, uh, for taking the, the stem out of the bike tire tubes themselves, you have to deflate them to replace them. There's a chain repair kit in here if you have a break in the length of the chain. Um, and then more zip ties. You never have enough zip ties there as well. So that's my setup. Um, the areas that I focus on are tools to be prepared for any, any damage or repairs needed in the field. Um, obviously the safety kit, keeping people from walking off with this thing if I'm back in the woods there. And uh, replacement tubes. Oh, one more thing. Um, I just have a finish line one step, cleaner and lube for the the chain itself. These things, if you get sand or if you get them wet and it gets a little bit of rust in there, the last thing you want to be doing is going to your hunting site squeaking real loud. So this helps from a loop standpoint. But that about does it. Um, once again, this set 
We'll have a, a more detailed review on the website at realhunters.com, listing out each individual product on here and where you can purchase them. Um, but there's been a really great, really great setup for me hunting public land and, and more importantly, getting game out when you're, when you're way far in there. So if you have any questions, go to our website. We'll happily, happily help you out. Thank you.